The reveal of Steve as Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's 8th DLC character got everybody talking. He literally broke Twitter upon being revealed, and whether or not you're celebrating his inclusion, baffled by it, indifferent, or somewhere in between, I don't think it can be argued that his inclusion is one that everybody had some degree of a reaction to. With these reactions, though, came a fair degree of negativity. People who haven't played Minecraft before, or people who perceive it as nothing more than a fad for kids along the line of something like Fortnite, have been questioning just why Steve deserves to be in the game. In this video, I wanted to offer my piece as to why Steve deserves a place on the roster alongside icons like Mario and Donkey Kong. I'll go over three arguments for Steve, as well as my thoughts on three arguments against him, and we'll see where we land. That said, let's roll. Let's start with something objective and non-arguable. Minecraft is the single best-selling video game of all time. It's not even really close either. It's managed to push a combined total of over 200 million units since its release, with the closest game behind it being GTA V, at a respectable but still far back 135 million. Some would be quick to interject to this by saying that Tetris is actually the best-selling video game of all time, but that's more of a false stat. You see, most people who consider Tetris to be the best-selling game of all time tend to include every installment in the Tetris franchise as one game. Tetris on the Game Boy gets lopped in with Tetris 99 on Switch, you know? This obviously doesn't make much sense, and the best-selling singular Tetris game to date is right behind GTA 5 at 100 million units sold. Minecraft is, on an objective level, the best-selling video game of all time. To say that it's too obscure or niche for a position in Smash is simply ridiculous when it's outsold the franchises of literally every other character in the game. It makes perfect sense that Nintendo and Mojang would see the potential of including such content in the game. This brings us to our second point. There's this general belief among critics of Steve's inclusion that Minecraft is nothing more than a dead fad, and that including a character from it would be akin to including something like Five Nights at Freddy's in the game. However, let's take a look at some numbers. As reported by The Verge in May of this year, Minecraft still regularly maintains about 126 million players on a monthly average, obviously having increased since quarantine. On top of that, the game is consistently watched on a global scale on streaming sites like Twitch and YouTube, and remains popular worldwide. To say that it's a dead fad is pretty narrow-minded, and tends to ignore a lot of evidence pointing towards the contrary. Again, it makes perfect sense that Nintendo and Mojang would recognize the demand for this type of collaboration. Talking about the character of Steve specifically, and less the game he's from for a moment, some have argued that he's simply not an iconic enough character in his own right to warrant a spot, and that other Minecraft creatures like Creepers have more brand recognition. This is highly debatable, but I don't think it can be understated just how important Steve is as the face of Minecraft. Think about any given Minecraft box art or piece of merch that you've seen, and think about what's on it. It's usually Steve, front and center, with some other creatures or animals around him, or Alex. Despite Creepers or Zombies arguably being more immediately known, it can't be argued argued that Steve is the face of Minecraft. Being the face of the best-selling game in human history does, in my opinion, qualify him as a gaming icon. Smash is, after all, a celebration of all things gaming, so it makes sense to include a character like Steve. Alright, so, those are the main arguments for Steve's inclusion in the game. Next up, I wanted to take a look at three arguments commonly being made against Steve's inclusion and do my best to try and counter-argue them. Let's roll. This is one of the most believable counter-arguments in my opinion, but it still carries some flaws. Minecraft is, objectively speaking, a recent game with a comparatively younger following than things otherwise represented in Smash, so I can understand why older players might not jive quite as much with his inclusion. However, it could also be argued that this same thing applies in reverse for other characters who have appeared in Smash. Characters like Terry Bogard and Banjo, while well deserving of their slots in their own rights and very fun inclusions, would be significantly less recognizable to the average younger player than characters like Mario and Sonic, and at a base, the Switch is a console primarily targeted with younger gamers in mind. If the game can include fan service for people who've been playing games for over 30 years, surely some can be included for those who are younger, right? <laughs> 
This is a pretty tepid discussion point, so I'm going to try and keep it brief, light, and non-sensationalist. Marcus Notch Person, the original founder of Mojang and creator of Minecraft, is not terribly well-liked by the general public these days. Without going into too much detail, since the discussion about a Smash Bros. character is not the place to do that, he's repeatedly made statements on Twitter and in other environments that have resulted in his reputation being severely damaged. This eventually led to his name being removed from certain elements of Minecraft quite recently. I can see where people are coming from. I wouldn't want someone who said the kinds of things as not being celebrated on a Smash level scale either. However, here's the thing. Notch left Mojang in 2014. He hasn't worked on Minecraft in six years. In fact, Minecraft without Notch has existed longer than Minecraft with Notch's involvement. A lot of things we know and love Minecraft and its iconography for today have had nothing to do with him. I personally don't care for the guy either, but to punish the workers at Mojang who've tried tirelessly to clean up his mess since his leave would be pretty unfair. This is definitely a strong argumentative point, but considering that Notch isn't benefiting in any way from Steve's inclusion, I think we're good. And on to one last, significantly less serious argument, some have expressed that Steve simply feels out of place in Smash, what with his stiff, rigid animations and simple art style. People have said that he clashes with the game's aesthetic. And to that, I have to say, what aesthetic? Smash is a celebration of all things gaming that's blended all sorts of art styles. You could argue the exact same thing looking at Mario standing next to a Fire Emblem character. Plus, characters like Mr. Game & Watch and to a lesser extent the Wii Fit Trainer exist, who arguably share a lot of traits with Steve, what with their simplistic art styles and stiff animations. I personally think having Steve animate in the same way as other Smash characters would look more out of place, like one of those weird Minecraft music videos. So there we have it, my arguments for why Steve deserves his newly found place in Smash. This is obviously just one guy on YouTube's opinion, so make sure to let me know how you feel about the matter in a civilized and professional way in the comments below. Thanks, hope you have a fantastic day before, during, and after watching, and I'll catch you all later. Thanks and cheers.